What's up, y'all? Toasted Ted here once again. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Deserted Zombie Survival. This will be uh, part one, I guess, of the uh, tutorial mini series. Um, gonna try to go over everything I know about the game in general, and by the end of it, I'll get more specific and show you examples and stuff like that. Um, I have found that these settings under the options which is the top right little gear looking thing next to the question mark you click that you go into settings you put everything exactly like this and that's how i play because the grass looks cool the shadows kind of create a little bit more uh, lag than there should be the textures quality being at middle is good enough you know what i mean because it being at max adds a little bit of lag but it being any lower also seems to add lag because it like blurs everything together instead of having it separate. So I think the middle setting is the best. Draw distance, you might as well just have everything loaded as much as possible. So that cuts down on lag. Because if it's way down at the other end, like way down here, it'll uh, have to load like everything that you run into. But if the draw distance is full, like that, then you'll be able to see further A and B, it'll like automatically load the surrounding environment, more of it at least. So there's not so much lag in terms of that. It'll just take a little bit longer to load the game. Anyway, um, creating a new character. I think I'm gonna, just from uh, notification purposes, I'm gonna get rid of Negan because I found that um, the, the uh, let's see, it's the nurse comes with a kitchen knife as opposed to the butcher knife, which they used to be the same thing back in the day. The kitchen knife was a meat cleaver back in the day, and now it's its actual own weapon, and I didn't know that, so that's pretty cool. But each of these characters comes with their own thing, okay? The farmer is the first one. He comes with the axe and that clothes that he's wearing, farmer top, farmer pants. And um, he comes with a corn cob, a water, a flashlight, and an axe, I think. And then like wood and you know stuff like that to start a start a whatever. Um, that's the farmer. He comes with the wood and the stuff like that to start a brand new guy. But the policeman, I don't remember if he starts with the wood or not, but I know I'm pretty sure he starts with a crafting table at least. But um, he comes with a gun that's empty, two clips that are both empty, which is kind of odd, but they should be loaded, if anything, but I'm sure that'll get fixed eventually. But he comes with that, um, three grenades, and I don't know, I can't remember if he comes with any food or not. He might come with some canned tuna, I can't remember. But the mechanic comes with that hammer for melee. Oh yeah, that's another thing. The cop also comes with a baton for melee. So he has a gun and melee at the same time. So he's a pretty good choice to start for beginners because then they can practice melee and ranged. Um, the mechanic comes with two fuel tanks or fuel canisters, which you pretty much only need one. I mean, you, you never need a thousand because each one's worth 500 gas. But um, I'll go into a tutorial about this character a little more on how to like fill or not this character, but on how to fill the tanks and fill your car and repair the car and all that in later episodes. But um, he comes with a blowtorch for car repair because he's the mechanic and gas and the hammer. And I, I can't remember if he comes with a flashlight and some food or not. I think it's just a flashlight. Then the, the nurse here comes with five health kits, five bandages, a kitchen knife, and I think some water pretty sure. And that's what I'm going to use to make Daryl because the kitchen knife stabs at things instead of um, slicing like the machete does. It stabs and you know what I mean? So that's pretty cool. But let's go here. Name him Daryl. Um, he has dark, a little bit darker skin than than uh, most because he's outdoors and he's tan all the time and whatnot. I'll go that hair. I wish I could go a little bit longer hair. You know what I mean? Like female hair almost because his hair should be down to his shoulders. But I'll go with this is the best I can get because it's kind of messy looking. 
And I know Daryl's not a nurse in the show, but whatever. He needs that knife, so I'm just going to start him with that. That's going to be his melee weapon. Like Negan has the bat and Michonne has the machete and all that. Anyway, um, yeah, I'll go into here, create that. I already already made a map called Tutorial 101, which I'll probably just load that same one. Or actually, I'll delete it just so you can see what you start with. But the Join LAN over here game, Local Area Network is what LAN stands for, if you didn't know. If you have two devices on the exact same Wi-Fi, both devices could pick up each other's single-player maps, which would make them LAN ma maps and games, you know? So if I had my tablet on right now and this Wi-Fi was on and they that one was on, the join LAN list on my tablet would, would have season five and six and nerfed again on the list, you know? but it would only have whichever one i join like right now if i go into nerfed again then that is the one that would be on the join alan map or game list you know what i mean like the season five and six wouldn't even show up because nobody's in that map using it but if i was in that map using it then it would show up but anyway um lan is down for right now anyway so it's kind of redundant but um the first map is more for like beginner players, I would say, simply because it's more leisure play and there's a lot of space in between towns to where, and camps to where like you don't always run into zombies everywhere you go. This map over here, and the left map has vehicles in almost every settlement. Almost every single settlement you see has a vehicle next to it that you can take and use. This map is quite a bit smaller but it has pretty much everything the other map has in terms of buildings and, and, you know, area, but it's all smashed together. So there's way less empty space in between them. And it's harder to find an area that doesn't have zombies near it. So you can like build and stuff like that. But that's the map I'm going to use just for the tutorial. Call it tutorial, done. Load up tutorial with Daryl. So he starts with all the stuff he should have. That's another thing. If you uh, start a brand new character and then load him, load him or her, that character, whatever, into a map that already exists and has already been played on, they won't start with their necessary equipment. Like if I had joined Nerfed again with this character, he wouldn't have all this stuff in his inventory. He'd just have the clothes. The clothing on the left, that's all you would have. But here's another tip for new players that don't know yet. You put your most important stuff in the belt for super quick, easy access to it. Um, water is worth a lot of thirst. Apples are not so much worth a lot of food, but they are. So you can eat three apples to fill your food and then drink one water, and it's pretty much the same. But anyway... Yeah, the uh, the kitchen knife lets you stab instead of slice, so that's pretty cool. The uh, buttons, buttons. Okay, the left button obviously is the D-pad that moves around, and because I have the setting set to floating joystick off or not selected, then the joystick stays where it's at, right? But if it's on, I'll show you that real quick just to show you. If you have it on. Then you can touch over here, go up, and that's the joystick. Touch down here, go up, touch right here, and go up. You know what I mean? So I think it's better to have it off so it's not floating, if you will. And it's just stationary right here because it's easier to remember where to touch. You know what I mean? Because I hate when I go to the middle of the screen and touch it, and then you do this at the same time, and it, and it joggles your camera around because you're hitting the look button at the same time you're doing the walk button or the, the game registers it that way. Anyway, um, the buttons, other than that, the other button on the left is a dive. Like, you just dive real quick. I'll zoom out so you can see what it looks like. Whoa. Yeah, there we go. That's what it's supposed to look like anyway. But um, that's about it for that. On the left or on the right side, you got the from from bottom up, I'll say, you have the uh, scope. 
So if you have a gun on it with a scope or just a gun in general, you can hit that button and it'll bring up the little crosshairs on the dot. See there, there's a white dot in the middle of the screen. If I have a gun like a pistol and I hit that crosshairs button down there, it'll bring up the white crosshairs around the dot, which you don't really need. I mean, you, you aim the exact same no matter if the crosshairs are there or not. But um, up from that is the action button. It actually lets you attack. Up from that is jump. Up from that is run, which lets you just sprint pretty much. I don't know if you want to call that a sprint button or a run button, but either way, you're running slash sprinting. You're going, you're running at your max speed, put it that way. You're jogging, moving, whatever it's called. But that's as fast as you can go on foot. But anyway, um, above that is crouch, which makes you a lot more quiet when you're trying to take down zombies like this. See, watch, I'll show you here in a second. You walk up. See, he heard me coming somehow. I don't know how, but he did. That was weird. <laughs> I was Oh, there's a backpack I can pick up. That's good. But yeah, you pick up. They A lot of zombies during the daytime, specifically daytime, drop stuff like that, and you can pick it up. Because the nighttime zombies don't ever drop anything. But you just go to equip. You hit the action button, which is the same one you would attack with, which is the second from the bottom, biggest button on the right. And it puts it on. Up from that, um, you got the emoji button. This is basically for uh, multiplayer. You wave, hi. You spin, dee dee dee, I'm dancing, yay. Flying kiss. Blow or bow. You blow. You blow a kiss, and then that one's a bow. What is that? Handstand? Oh my god, it is a handstand. You can just hold it for a while. That's pretty cool. <laughs> See if you can walk. Ah, oh, it'd be so cool if you can do a handstand and then hit forward and he just walks on his hands. <laughs> Backflip. See, these don't do anything. It, it's literally just like if you were online playing with another person in the LAN system, he would see in chat, Daryl does backflip. Daryl does backflip. Daryl does handstand. You know what I mean? He would see stuff like that. Like here's Daryl dancing. What kind of dance is he doing? What is this? Huh. Whatever dance that is, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, up from that, you got the uh, pause button, which brings up the menu, which is pretty obvious. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. Camera button to the left of that that zooms in and zooms out, third person and first person. If you hit the far left button up there, it zooms out automatically, right? And it gives you this view. So you could turn the camera at will without um, screwing up where you're aiming. Like your character is still facing forward. So if I attack, he's still going to attack in front of him, not where the camera's aiming. But then you hit that again and he corrects his vision and now you're locked up again. Anyway, yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, buttons. Um, at least I don't know of any more buttons that I'm not that I didn't mention at least. But here I'll show you. Hopefully I'll be able to level up once, and I'll show you the level up system. Wow, that was a lot of shots. But yeah, I like how this uh, weapon is a stabbing weapon, you know. And I think honestly, it's easier to play in this view. So it's more precise in terms of how you aim and stuff like that. Because the other way is kind of like not so precise. Kind of feels a little sloppy. Which, I mean, that's, you know, whoever wants to play however they want to play was whatever they're doing. But this one here should be five, yeah. This will be my fifth kill, which will give me five experience. Which later each kill gives you two experience. And, I, and maybe it's just night chasers and runners. Let's see. I just got, what is that, five? Okay. So now let's kill this night chaser or this runner and see if the runner gives you two. Because I know night chasers give you two later. I don't know about runners. I have seven now. Oh, I do. Okay. So runners give you two no matter what. And runners and night chasers give you two experience. I did not know that. I mean, I did, but I refigured that out, put it that way. Anyway, I leveled up. See how right side it says skill points five. The perks don't make any difference. There is no perks right now. 
but I got five points to put on. A good one to use is uh, if you're, especially if you're going to use a lot of melee, you want to use strength, which is what Daryl does a lot. And eventually there'll be a bow and arrow in this game, I'm sure. Because if there's not, then that's a complete waste. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for episode one of the tutorial. What did I show you? How to create, how to, um, what the buttons are, and how to level up. But uh, anyway, if you like the episode, give it a like. Leave your comments down below on what you want to see in further episodes, because there's going to be a couple more, at least, if not three or four more. But this little mini series should be pretty informative for anybody that doesn't know how to play, that they shouldn't need a uh, gameplay tutorial if they just watch these. Anyway, um, yeah, if you like this, then stay tuned for more. And as always, thank you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. This is Toasted Ted, and I'm out.